we've been able to carefully go back into samples where we have um, a combination of different tissue states from the same patient, meaning we have a sample of the patient's cancer, but also different uh, features of the precancerous tissue from that same individual that we could dissect from the surgical sample so we could get the earliest Barrett's esophagus without any evidence of dysplasia. We could get this, the Barrett's esophagus with low-grade dysplasia, high-grade dysplasia, and finally the cancer, and then try to understand how the genome evolves over time and what's the process by which cancers form in these patients. And this, uh, this process of evaluating that question can have many implications, uh, the most uh, obvious of which is that there's many millions of people in this country who have Barrett's esophagus, which is a state, uh, an, an abnormal state in the esophagus that puts them at risk of getting uh, esophageal cancer. But right now we don't know which patients with Barrett's are going to get esophageal cancer and how to effectively screen and <laughs> prevent that. And if we could more carefully uh, identify the process that the cancers develop, we could then ultimately uh, try to have better ways to find the people at greatest risk and to diagnose them early or even to block their chance of, of getting cancer.